I'm DJ Tedis One. I'm a DJ producer from Calgary, and I make anything and everything that's house. I'm originally from Chile, from Santiago, Chile. Uh, we had originally actually moved to Moose Jaw. I uh, got a job in Calgary, came to Calgary. My mom, she was in bands all her life. I used to listen to a lot of 50s records with her. Like, those are my favorite 50s, 60s, Bobby Vinton, Paul Anka. And I started listening to Kraftwerk and all that kind of stuff. And then it just stemmed off from there. I mean, natural progression. I originally, when I started getting into DJing, I got into hard trance, like just anything that was more banging, you're younger. That's what's at the raves at the time. Uh, yeah, I remember my first show in Calgary. We didn't really know anybody, and I'd met a guy from Calgary who's in a pretty big production company out here. He had introduced me to a club owner down here. This club, we, we were given a residency, myself and this other guy. Um, they gave us the worst night, but they gave us the option of doing a, a liquor special. Well, the liquor special was Penny Highballs at the time. So it created kind of a buzz and allowed for a really good opportunity to connect everybody. The process for every track is always different. I mean, it's always whatever's inspiring me at the moment. Sometimes it's movies, sometimes it's scenery. I mean, we all invest feelings into certain songs, whether we like something or hate something, but it's, it's always relative. Calgary's definitely unique. From traveling back in the day, having tours across Canada, Calgary has its own kind of method of madness. Some of the promoters here, they've built the infrastructure enough that it can facilitate the growth and the flow and the patterns. When it lost its after hours, it was kind of a shock, but at the same time, it was kind of a sad thing where anyone that wasn't non-commercial didn't have a place to really go to, to to hear the deeper stuff. Some of the biggest acts have come here and I've, they've always told me that it's one of their favorite places to play. I've always enjoyed it, um, small venues to big venues. I personally enjoy smaller venues, more intimate and you can get away with a, a lot more intuitive stuff. I'm really happy and it's exciting to see Heineken working with more of a local base uh, in every city. It's really cool actually seeing a lot of these names pop up here and there and bringing everything together and showing how much talent Canada actually has on the global scale. For Heineken's Green Room, the one best part is that they bring a lot of shows. They definitely bring a little more of an edge. They throw a little more production, a little more sound. Uh, there's always more value. Bang for your buck for sure when you go to like Green Room parties. Currently I'm working on a three to four track EP. It's kind of like Future House, The Garage, that whole kind of movement. I'm starting to let go a little bit and go back to my roots and kind of enjoying the movement. Doing a couple trap tracks and a couple funky tracks. I'm actually doing a track with Coolio from back in the day. He's super talented. He knows what he wants to do and he's pretty confident in it. And it shows when you work with him. In terms of a local skill, there's always been passion and a lot of drive here. I think that whatever happens, it's even if it's thrown curveballs over the years from the raid bylaws changing, the scene always finds a way to survive here and it tries to grasp whatever's current or at the time to help it. I've always felt it's like, it's like surfing, catching the right wave, seeing the wave. Um, the waves never end. It's just a certain sounds that end, right? It'll always be around. It'll just always keep evolving and changing. You don't necessarily have to follow a fashionable kind of flow or whatever's going on, but if you believe in it enough, you create your sounds, you believe in your design enough, yeah, you'll create that following, right? <laughs>